Good evening, Rolling Meadows. This is the just June 26, 2018 City Council meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Will the clerk, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Cannon? Here. Alderman Bud Mats? Present. Alderman Majikas? Here. Alderman Gallo? Here. Alderman Diastas? Present. And um, that's five. With five present and uh, two absent, we do have a quorum. First order of business is to approve the minutes from the July 10th, 2018 council meeting. Is there a motion to approve the meeting, the minutes from that meeting? So move, Mayor. Thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Seeing none, is the question shall be, shall the minutes be approved? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it and the minutes are approved. I do need a mo motion to deviate for life-saving awards for Officer Kim and Soto. Do I have such a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Diaz has made that and has seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. We will now deviate from the agenda. I would like the chief to please come forward. today to be here tonight to issue two life-saving awards to Officer Dave Kim and Officer Mike Soto, if you could step on up here. Let me tell you a little bit about these two heroes. It was just a couple weeks ago, actually it was July 1st, shortly after midnight. I know, uh, like my parents always said, nothing really happens good after midnight, and that is usually true. However, these two officers were working, so they, uh, we were definitely fortunate to have them patrolling the streets, protecting all of us. What happened was, like I said, it was shortly after midnight and they received a call for a medical emergency at our Motel 6. They quickly responded over there and when they got there, on the parking lot of the Motel 6, they found an 18-year-old girl struggling for her life. They quickly jumped into action. Officer Kim ensured that her airway was open as she was gasping for breath. Officer Soto realized that she was overdosed and issued a Narcan injection into her and saved her life. She literally probably could have had minutes, maybe even seconds, if it wasn't for these two officers. Uh, she was given a second chance at such a young age. A lot of people don't get second chances, and actually, my understanding is she is taking advantage of that, and she is getting some treatment for uh, an addiction uh, problem. So I'd like to give these awards to Officer Dave Kim and Officer Mike Soto. I just want to say thank you on behalf of the City Council and the City, and uh, it is great to have you guys out there. You're the next generation, so it's always nice to know that uh, no matter, even if it is after midnight and good things don't happen, we have good people that will show up, so that would be great. So again, let's give them a hand and thank them for what they did. We're going to take about a 60 second break because I know Mr. Soto's dad's here. If you'd like to come up for a picture, uh, we got to get some pictures. Yes, Mr. Soto Sr. just retired from 36 years with the Rolling Meadows High School. Yes. 36 years, so. We just started this program not even two years ago, and we've already saved two individuals. A 41-year-old mother, now an 18-year-old daughter. Actually, Officer Pock back there, he actually was our uh, officer who saved our first person on her uh, opiate overdose. So congratulations to you, too. And we get a group picture? Yes,
that now brings us to uh, the mayor's report. Um, it's always a busy time in Meadows, and I, I try to take advantage of everything that uh, does go forward. Uh, I did have the opportunity upon returning from out of town to make it to the uh, parking lot party that uh, the park district had. It was a good event, a little muggy, but the rain stayed away. Uh, I also had the opportunity that same day is uh, Mesocordia had an event that was scheduled for a fundraiser in uh, the Rolling Meadows uh, at the other end of town, the Rolling Mills Park District, so I had a, the opportunity to meet with those folks and they really did a great event. I also attended the Chamber of Commerce golf outing where we were able to connect with uh, a number of uh, businesses that were here for the city. And finally, last Saturday, we had the, the city market. Um, those of you that were brave enough, the sun either shined and it just drizzled a little bit, but the heavy rain didn't come by until after we were done. But there were a couple of companies there. One was a chocolate company that's uh, out of Rolling Meadows and they're looking to actually open a store here in the future. And there is a, for those of you who've been there, there's, some, uh, there's a company that does, uh, makes pottery and mugs and they are also looking it's in the future. So I just thought I would pass that on. Uh, it's nice to see people come to the city market and we will be even having some greater events in August and September, so stand by for that. Are there any ward reports? Mr. Budmetz. I did receive a call from a resident who was questioning the uh, Dominic's property, saying that it looks very overgrown, the weeds are getting high, and they're wondering if anything's happening with it, so. Thank you. Anything else? The meeting is now open to the public for uh, 20 minutes. Uh, the council is open for 20 minutes to address the city council on matters that are, that are on the agenda or regarding other issues. We ask that persons wishing to address the city council keep their comments to five minutes in length. Comments must be addressed to the council as a whole and then through the mayor and profanity may not be used in any form. Uh, the first person up for signature or to speak tonight is Dick Miner. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm here tonight to uh, uh, support the uh, uh, variance that uh, was passed by the Planning Commission a few weeks ago. Uh, I'm here with several other members of our board of the Town Home Association, and uh, we've been working very hard to get this done. Uh, I don't know how many of you know the, the history of, of this, but there was a problem in that we had a dispute as an association with the school district and the fence that existed between our property and the school district property was torn down. Uh, it was a dispute over maintenance. Uh, that created a problem for a lot of homeowners, 19 to be exact, whose homes lost their backyard in the process and had it open to, to the school. We uh, worked hard and got uh, the fence rebuilt. Uh, it was, I might say I should, the, the fence was there because uh, it was required by zoning between an R3 district and an R1 district. We are an R3 district. The school is, is an R1. Uh, the zoning calls for a six-foot barrier fence between those areas. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was on school property. Uh, that was a result of a, an agreement that went back to 1989. And uh, what was unfortunate about the agreement was that it provided for us to erect a fence on school property, but it didn't speak to maintenance. And the school district did not want to maintain the fence. Our association board at the time didn't see why we should maintain a fence on school property. They lost sight of the fact that we needed it for our zoning. At any rate, the fence came down last November and uh, we had a, uh, a bit of a turnover on the board. The, the former president of the board passed away and there was another vacancy. Uh, and nothing really got done despite, uh, despite some pleas by the building department that we had to have a fence there. Uh, following our April board meeting when uh, uh, two new members were installed, myself being one of them, uh, we took it on ourselves to get it done and we actually got the first phase. We, we asked the building department for permission to build the fence in two phases. The first phase being 
the, the south 600 feet, which backed up to these townhomes and gave them a backyard, and the last 200 feet to be built at a later date if we could not obtain a variance to not build it. That 200 feet is between an open road with the townhomes on one side and the school's athletic fields on the other side. It was very wide consensus among the homeowners that that portion should not be, uh, should not have a fence, that they wanted it open. Um, as a result, we sought the variance and the building department allowed us to go ahead and apply for the variance and build the first part of the fence. The first part of the fence was built again on school property with the school district's uh, approval. Uh, and that went up, I think it was completed about the mid-June. Uh, mid uh, at that time, we also had applied for the variance and we met with the, the Planning and Zoning Commission and they approved uh, our request for a variance. And uh, I think the vote was seven to two. And we proceeded, we proceeded to, to wait for this meeting. And in the meantime, we found that there were a few people in our, uh, in our town home association who wanted to see the fence in the part where we didn't want it. And uh, I, we heard from them at the planning commission meeting. The, the planning commission uh, heard it as well. And uh, uh, they still voted. You, you have 45 seconds. 45 seconds. Thank I got to talk faster. Uh, at any rate, we, uh, uh, we would like to get your approval to get the variance uh, passed on for the next reading. We feel it's good for our community. And uh, if there are other questions and I would have a chance to answer them, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for coming forward tonight. Uh, the next signatory is Pat Haw Hawkin? Harrington. Harrington, thank you. We, we have to get a better pen with ink there because it I looks like it. Better. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here for it, to listen to us. I serve on the Meadow Edge Board, was here with the Planning Committee, and I basically will say the same thing I said that evening. I went with the board down to the open field. Uh, I was with, Ms. with our um, Alderman Mike Cannon. Your chief, our chief of police, uh, Dick Miner, who just spoke, and myself, and we talked about the variance. We asked about the safety of the school, and your chief said, and this is what really hit me as a mother and a grandmother, living in this day and age with all that we see going on. If I have an emergency, I need to be able to get my equipment to the back of this school. I have the same reaction right now I had then. My heart is in my throat. And I think our children need to be, I said, oh my heavens. We never think it's gonna happen in our backyard, but we have to be prepared for our children. And he commented, we asked his permission, or Mr. Minor did, he commented that if there was a fence there and there was an active shooter or something would happen in an emergency situation, that they would be blocked, the students would be blocked in. If there's no fence, they can run into our backyards and hide behind our townhomes. So I'm just asking you to put our children first, let our school district remain safe, and let our department of uh, the police and fire do their work. Thank you for your time. And thank you for coming forward tonight. The next signatory is Tony Pereca. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the uh, City Council, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tony Parike. I'm here on behalf of ISNS, and I am uh, here to speak in opposition to the Consent Ordinance C on your agenda, which seeks to establish an M3 manufacturing district classification and rezone a certain area from an M1 manufacturing district to an M3 manufacturing district. Um, I was present at the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on July 3rd when this matter was uh, added to the agenda. And uh, I want to just uh, reiterate, I'm sure you have a report that the Planning and Zoning Committee, or par pardon me, Planning and Zoning Commission at that meeting uh, voted uh, by a vote of six to one to reject uh, this M3 uh, designation. 
What I want to add, as we have stated uh, in front of the Planning and, Sub and Zoning Committee Commission members, is that uh, the timing of this proposal to change the M1 uh, zoning to an M3 zoning is suspect. It comes right on the heels of the ISNS petition submission and consideration. Uh, we also would like to state for the record on behalf of ISNS that the intent of this is questionable and um, uh, perhaps uh, designed to, in a way to thwart the advancement of the special use uh, uh, applications submitted by ISNS at, for 1200 Hicks Road um, uh, location. Uh, thirdly, uh, considering the anticipated retention of a um, uh, planner or a planning company to consider a comprehensive uh, plan for a redraft after a 20-year uh, presence of the existing comprehensive plan for Rolling Meadows, it seems to us uh, eminently reasonable that the uh, any change in the manufacturing district at this location uh, should be considered after the comprehensive plan is designed, uh, presented to the City Council and considered rather than now doing this uh, for, we believe, suspect and questionable reasons on an ad hoc basis. Uh, the proposal would uh, allow for dance studios, tattoo parlors, and medical facilities uh, to be um, uh, removed from, from this area. But uh, when you look at the proposed map, as I'm sure all of you have received the, the map uh, of this proposed uh, change to M3 of the M1 district, it is literally 100 feet or so or less in front of the ISNS property and about 100 feet north of their uh, uh, northern boundary of, of INSS pro IN ISNS property. So when I say that it's suspect, I mean that sincerely. Um, we don't want to speculate as to the timing and why this happened now, but you know uh, we are reasonable people who, uh, whose minds question uh, these kinds of things because nothing happens by accident. Things are intentional. So uh, I would, uh, on behalf of ISNS, urge all of you to uh, follow the recommendation of the uh, City Planning and Zoning Commission in, in voting this down, or if you choose to consider it, to uh, postpone it until after the ISNS application, which has been moved to the August 14th uh, meeting of this uh, august body. Uh, I believe any other uh, solution would likely uh, exacerbate the situation and cause additional unnecessary problems. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming forward tonight. Uh, the next uh, signatory is Zil Khan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and respected um, elder men and elder women and all the ladies and gentlemen in the audience, uh, good evening. Um, my name is Zil Khan. Um, I lived in Buffalo Grove and I have worked for the government for last 30 years and I'm still working. Out of those 30 years, I have served in three municipal governments around uh, Chicago land area. And my last position, was the village engineer for the 14 years out of the 21 years that I have served. Also, I have lived in Buffalo Grove for 24 years, and out of those 24 years, I have served on a planning and zoning commission. Initially, it was the planning commission, which I served for 15 years, and then when they merged, the, the village board of trustees asked me to serve on a planning and zoning commission. So 18 years on a planning zoning commission, 30, 30 years and counting in, in the government. I work for the federal government now. I have, and I have seen from all angles, from the planning and zoning commission member, as well as working for the government, or just a simple citizen of my village or any other town. 
I have never ever seen such a move before the the Planning and Zoning Commission and and coming before the city city council. It's called the spot zoning. The the city council can can create any kind of a zoning inside a zoning. And when I address the Planning and Zoning Commission, I urge all of them that I am just like you. I am on a Planning and Zoning Commission in another town, but just a common citizen and being a, 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 a member of the ISNS, I urge them to deny the, uh, the, the request moving forward for the uh, uh, M3 zoning. I, I brought it up before the full uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, and I had confirmed that the, the, the city has already retained a services of a consulting engineer to do the uh, 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 zoning uh, thing. So why we are bringing this one up at the last minute in the same meeting where the ISNS had their application? Most of the Planning and Zoning Commission members did not reply. However, I heard from two of them, and this is, and I, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to rephrase it because I never wrote it down. So this is what they said in the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, a couple of members spoke and said, timing and intention are questionable. This is the body that you have appointed them based on their expertise. Some of them might be the lawyer, some of them might be the engineer, some of them might be the planner. Their job is to look at each and every case on a case-by-case -case basis and not bring anything else into, into this. This is what their job is, and this is what I do every day. And this just defeats the whole purpose of my philosophy in life that I'm working for 30 years, that I wanted to get the most difficult person's phone call in my office and the most difficult person walks in, 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 in my office so that I can make a difference. When that person leaves my office, I want to see, hmm, I had the wrong impression about my local government and about my federal government. Everybody is not the same. There are lots of good people in the, in the government. They want to do the good job and the right thing every sing, sing, single day. So I'm, I'm here to urge you that tonight you have the power. The people have elected you in this position and you have a lot of power. You can do the right thing or not so good. The, um, the, so I'm, I'm just asking the, uh, the, yeah, the city council that um, uh, please consider my humble rec request and, and turn it down, or you can even continue it to a, a, a future date. Thank you so much for listening to me. Really appreciate it. And thank you for coming forward this evening. This brings us to ordinances for a second reading. Ordinance A, which is ordinance number 18-28, amend the chapter 82 right-of-way management providing for the regulation of and application for small wireless facilities in the public rights of way. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. So the Estes has made that. It has been seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay, before I, there's one other part that I would like to add to this before we vote. In January of this year, the City Council adopted an ordinance regulating small cell towers. The ordinance was drafted based upon the then pending legislation so that the city would have some regulations in place. Since that time, the legislation has passed. Legislation for small cell towers. The attached ordinance will allow the city to regulate small cell towers consistent with the final legislation. Will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Alderman Budmatz? Yes. Alderman Majikas? Yes. Alderman Gallo? Yes. Alderman Diastas? Yes. Alderman Cannon? Yes. With five in favor and none opposed, the ordinance is adopted. 
I'm asking for a motion to deviate so that we can swear in the Ward 7th Alderman, Rob Williams. Do I have such a motion? Mr. Bud Matz has made that. It has been seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we will now deviate from the agenda. Uh, before I administer the oath of uh, uh, Alderman Williams, um, he has been a, a longtime resident of Rolling Meadows. He has served on the Chamber of Commerce. He has worked for uh, Dunn and Bradstreet. He is uh, currently the president of Fairfax Village. I, as I looked at your resume, you've been in and out with all the things that you've done. So currently he is the president of uh, Fairfax Village, when he's not the president, he's serving on the board, and he's also been involved with the city with projects that were uh, 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 involved with the, uh, the uh, Fairfax Village. So, Mr. Williams, would you please come forward? <laughs> I'm told by my parliamentarian I forgot to get a second on the motion. Do we have a second? And for a second, I thought, and all in favor, aye. Mr. Gallo had, Mr. Gallo had done the second. We'll give you a third, too. We'll give you, you're going to get a third now. So. No. Raise your right hand. I, Rob Williams. Sorry, right. Sorry, I thought it was a simple vote, but it needs to be a roll call. Right there, Mr. Williams. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Majikas? Yes. Alderman Gallo? Yes. Alderman Diaz? Yes. Alderman yes. Cannon? Yes. Bud Matz? Yes. Okay, thank you. We will always remember this one. This was, you know, the most unique. Please raise your hand. We can take the pictures again. I, Rob Williams. I, Rob Williams. Having been appointed to the office of Alderman Ward 7. Having been appointed to the office of Alderman of Ward 7. In the city of Rolling Meadows. In the city of Rolling Meadows. County of Cook. County of Cook. State of Illinois. State of Illinois. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Alderman Ward 7 to the best of my ability. And, well, and I will discharge the duties of the Office, the duties of, the office, office of, of Alderman of Ward 7 to the best of my ability. Best of my ability. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like some pictures? Do you have someone you would like to have a picture with? Or? Now officially in. Okay, so okay. that brings us to consent ordinances for first reading. The next item on the agenda, the consent ordinance, consists of two items B and C. Does any alderman wish to have any of them removed? Mr. Cannon? B. That means we no longer have a consent ordinance. That brings us to ordinance B. It will grant the approval for the amendment to. I'm sorry. I'm 
you right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Now that we have a new council, we need to call the roll again, please. Thank you. Alderman Gallo? Here. Alderman Diastas? Here. Alderman Williams? Here. Alderman Cannon? I'm still here. <laughs> Alderman Bud Vance? Present. Alderman Majikas? Here. Thank you. With six present and one absent, we do have a quorum. We will now move on to the consent ordinances. And we've already had ordinance B moved, removed. So we, ordinance B will grant the approval for an amendment to the Meadows Edge planned development and variance to allow a fence along the northern 300 feet of the eastern property line to not be reinstalled. Do I have a motion to move forward? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Do we have a second? Mr. Ken has made that second. The ordinance, if adopted, would allow an amendment to the existing Meadows Edge plan development to permit the Homeowners Association to not replace the northern 300 feet of fencing along their border with Plum Grove Junior High. At its meeting held on Tuesday, July 3rd, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission voted 7 to 1 with one absent to recommend approval for the amendment to the PUD to allow the association to not replace the northern 300 feet. Mr. Cannon, since uh, you pulled that, you, uh, you have first opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just kind of wanted to give, just make a couple statements just so people know where I stand on it, saying it's in my ward. Um, just for the record, uh, as of 6 o'clock last night, I didn't think there was any issues here at all. Uh, we got a letter in the mail last night that the mayor forwarded to me about a group of people that live in this development who had some issues. Um, even though it was short notice, I met a few of them out at the area and uh, we discussed some of the, the comments or th that they thought were part of the argument. Um, what I would say is I think uh, the board who I've been dealing with on this particular subject since last November has been very forthright. From the outside looking in, it looks like they've tried to do everything the right way. Um, there's been some disputes as to whether some people were allowed to vote or not. I'm in no, I'm in no position to comment to that either way. I have no idea how the voting went. But I think uh, these people have been working with us. They worked with the planning and zoning. They worked with District 15. Uh, I think a really important issue, I feel, is that our police chief and the resource officer from Plum, Plum Grove Junior High and come out and spent, I don't know, a good half hour, 45 minutes with us and discussed issues that might be ar arise because of this fence being down. And they both were very, very supportive of leaving it down. So uh, I'm in support of this tonight the way it stands. And I would say to the people who are not happy with this solution that they still have an opportunity to come by at a later date if they can get the majority of people to switch over to say that they want it up. Maybe at a later date they can put a fence up if that's what they so choose and they can convince people to do it. But at this point, I have to kind of side with the board. They were the elected representatives of 210 units. They got almost half the people voted, which to me, any of us are involved with the HOAs that we've had in the past know that that's a pretty good number in a lot of ways. Uh, because a lot of, in, in effect, with our own voting in Rolling Meadows, how many people vote in our elections? Four or 5,000 people out of 24,000. So getting 50% of the people to voice an opinion is pretty impressive to me. So I know some people will be disappointed, but I think the people who've done the hard work and have done all the legwork behind us, I think they deserve our support if not building this fence. So I uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Diasis? Yes. Alderman Williams? Yes. Alderman Cannon? Yes. Alderman Bob Matz? Yes. Alderman Majikas? Yes. Alderman Gallo? Yes. Six in favor, none opposed. That ordinance does pass. This brings us to uh, Ordinance C to establish an M3 manufacturing district classification and rezone a certain area from M1 district to M3 manufacturing. This is the first reading. Do I have a motion to move forward? I'll move there. Ms. Pajakis has made that. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Yastis has made that. This ordinance, if adopted, would establish a new M3 manufacturing zoning district classification. <laughs> the request for us prepared and presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission by the City Attorney at its regular meeting held on July 3rd, 2018. The proposed new zoning district is bound by Hicks on the west, Industrial Avenue on the south, Rolling on the west, road to, on the east, and the city's corporate limits, excluding the area existing in the M2 multi-purpose zoning district. The subject area includes all properties that are currently zoned as an M1 manufacturing. 
at its regular meeting of the July 3rd, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended to not approve the proposed M3 Manufacturing Zone District as proposed by the City of Rolling Meadows as petitioner. The vote was one in favor and six opposed and one absent, and uh, one abstention and one absent. At its regular meeting of July 3rd, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Com Commission voted to not, rec to not recommend approval of a proposed amendment to the comprehensive plan and rezoning request for the area generally located north of Industrial Avenue, east of Hicks Road, south of the current boundary or the corporate limits of the city, and west of Rolling Road from M1 Manufacturing to M3 Manufacturing. The vote was zero in favor and eight opposed, and one absent. Um, is there any discussion? Well, uh, okay, before we have a discussion, I'm going to uh, ask our city attorney to just summarize. Uh, Jim. The, the, the ordinances that are before you will serve to remove three uses from the, um, the, the area that the mayor just described, which is currently in the M1 district, reclassify that as an M3 district, and remove uh, three uses from those as permitted or as permitted uses within that district. Um, that's the only purpose. Other than that, the, uh, the, the, the zoning regulations as pertain to that, business, that district, uh, as geographically, geographically described by the mayor, will remain, uh, remain in full force and effect. Um, one thing I would like to, to, to add is that the, one, the, the ordinances that, that were in the packet were previous drafts and not intended to be the final draft. To that end, I would ask that the uh, council make a motion with respect to the ordinance amending the comprehensive zoning code to create an M3 manufacturing zoning district be amended to delete what is proposed as chapter 122, section 122-320, I'm sorry, strike that, 323, Paren, lowercase c, close paren, 13. That provision should not be there. It refers to used car sales along Ogonquit Road, Golf Road, and Wilkie Road, and that was never intended to be in the final packet. And uh, so I would ask for a motion to, uh, to, uh, to amend the proposed ordinance to delete that proposed subsection. Do I have such a motion? I make a motion that we amend the ordinance to uh, delete that subsection that the, the attorney just mentioned. And do we have a second? I second. Mr. Majakis has made that. Is there a discussion on the motion? Yes. On the, on the amendment, or are we talking about We're, the uh, original is there, motion? Is there a discussion on the amendment to the motion? And the, the motion on the amendment, yes. Is now it the, and now the motion as amended? The, the, on what Mr. Deastis has just, so is there a discussion on what Mr. McCall has just said? It's on, it's on the amendment. It's on the amendment. So don't we vote on the amendment now and then yes, go on to yes. a discussion? I'm just asking if there's any other discussion. Okay. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Williams. Yes. Alderman Cannon? Yes. Alderman Bob Mance? Yes. Alderman Majikas? Yes. Alderman Gallo? Yes. Alderman Deastas? Yes. Six in favor, none opposed. Now, is there a, to discuss, now, is there, do we have a motion to uh, go forward with the M3 manufacturing as amended? So move, Mayor. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a discussion as? The motion as amended. I, yes, Mr. Gill. I, I would like to say that I, I do put a, quite a bit of faith in the commissions that the city has put forward to look at subjects and explore them a little bit deeper than what we have, the council, city council has time for. 
And if they've come up with a decision that it should not be moved forward in the case as it is outlined now, um, I too am trying to get some more objective feedback um, in the sense that the direction of conventional city or urban planning is going and how we use land or how we use transportation. And so with that, I'm, I'm not sure that I have sufficient information to go ahead and support this at this time until I see such information that putting together a proposal of M3 is progressive for our city or if it's taking us a step backward in time when we can utilize such areas for multiple uses rather than just industrial alone. So I, I will be voting no at this time. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Bud Metz. Um Rolling Meadows has typically prided itself on having transparency in government. I've read the recommendations of the Zoning Commission. There were people who were questioning the timing um, in, in some respects, the motivation of the of this, and I think it's wrong for motiv us to even give the uh, appearance um, that there's suspect timing or motivation um, in light of the other um, other items which are coming before us from ISNS, so that so that we do not appear to be um, in any way um, suspect or or non-transparent in our government doing. I, I will be voting against this. I think it's a I think it's a poor idea. Also, the, the comments that were made earlier today that we've, we've commissioned somebody to re redo our comprehensive plan, and now we're, it's kind of like we're throwing this in at the last minute. Why don't we wait to see what happens with the comprehensive plan and then re revisit this after the comprehensive plan has been approved? Thank you. Further. Mr. Cannon? Uh, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I would propose that we postpone this until ISNS issue is solved one way or another. And then we can bring it back up, and at that time we can either incorporate it into our new our new program, or we can have a discussion about it. I don't think this, we should mess around with this relative to what's going on over there right now. I think we should keep it as clean as we can, address the ISNS issue separately, and when that's solved one way or another, um, we can bring it up for a further discussion. So I would say um, postpone it to a later date. I can't give you a date because I don't know when that the rest of that's going to happen. Um, if I have to give a date, I would say a couple of months. I don't know if we go, Mr. McCall. I don't know if we can postpone. To postpone. We have to go to the next meeting. It would be the August 14th meeting then. Well, I okay, that's fine. I would go. That's, I'll offer that up to see if, how people feel about it. So you're making a motion to postpone to the August 14th meeting. Yes. Okay. Do we have a second, Mr. Budmetz? You seconded. Yeah. Any other discussion on the postponement? Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Cannon? Yes. Alderman Bud Matz? Yes. Alderman Majikas? I'm just clarifying this is the postponement until the August 14th. No. Alderman Gallo? No. Alderman Diaz? No. Alderman Williams? No. With four against and two for, that amendment to postpone fails. Which brings us back to the original ordinance. Is there any further discussion? We have a first, second, as amended by our city attorney. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Bob Matz? No. Alderman Majikas? Yes. Alderman Gallo? No. Alderman Diaz? Yes. Alderman Williams? No. Alderman Cannon? No. With four against and two, that ordinance fails. This brings us to uh, new business, the motion to approve the payments of the July 24th, 2018, as presented by the Finance Department. Is there a motion to approve the warrant? Mr. Gallo has made that. Do we have a second? Candidate seconded. Is there any discussion on the warrant? Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Majikas? Yes. Alderman Gallo? Yes. Alderman Diaz? Yes. Alderman Williams? Yes. Alderman Cannon? Yes. Alderman Bob Matz? Yes. With six in favor and none opposed, the warrant is approved. This now brings us to the consent resolutions. 
The next item on the agenda consists of two items, E and F. Does anyone wish to have an item from the consent agenda for resolutions pulled? Then it's uh, the chair declares an order to consider both motions in, w in one motion without debate. Is there such a motion? Mr. Cannon has made that, has been seconded. It's been seconded. The question is, shall both, both resolutions be adopted? Resolution E, number 18-R-66, is to award a contract for vehicle lift replacement postponed as of July 10th, 2018 council meeting. The resolution, if adopted, will authorize the purchase and installation of one rotary lift model 10210DS-54,000 pound, pound capacity, which will replace the existing 21-year-old large vehicle lift. The item was originally bought brought to the City Council for consideration on June 26th and was postponed for approval at the meeting and at the July 10th, 2018 <coughs> meeting due to the request for additional information. Resolution F, number 18-R-69 is to reject the bids for emergency backup generator at Public Works. This resolution, if adopted, would reject the five bids received on April 27th, 2018 for the proposed supply and installation of an emergency generator and related building wiring at the Public Works facility located at 3900 uh, Burdick Street. Again, the question is, shall both, res both resolutions be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Gallo? Yes. Alderman Diasas? Yes. Alderman Williams? Yes. Alderman Cannon? Yes. Alderman Bumatz? Yes. Alderman Majikas? Yes. Six in favor and none opposed. Those resolutions are uh, passed. This brings us to other uh, businesses and uh, reports. The mayor has no uh, appointments. I do have a proclamation. As we all know, it's, uh, it's, that t it's the time of year, in the beginning of August, where we do our national night out so national night out number 28 in the year 2018 whereas the national association of town watch is sponsoring a unique nationwide crime drug and violence prevention program on august 7th 2018 entitled national night out and whereas the 35th annual national night out provides a unique opportunity for the Rolling Meadows to join forces with thousands of other communities across the country in promoting the cooperative police community crime prevention efforts. Whereas it is essential that all citizens of the Rolling Meadows be aware of the importance of crime prevention in programs and the impact that the participation can have on reducing crime, drugs, and <coughs> violence in Rolling Meadows and Illinois. Whereas police, community partnerships, neighborhood safety, awareness, and cooperation are important themes of National Night Out program. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Len Prana, do hereby call upon all citizens of Rolling Meadows, Illinois, to join the City of Rolling Meadows, the National Association of Town Watch, in supporting the 35th annual National Night Out on August 7th, 2018. Further, let it be resolved that I, Mayor Len Prana, do hereby proclaim that Tuesday, August 7th, 2018, as National Night Out in Rolling Meadows, Illinois. This uh, brings us to uh, staff reports. Uh, Mr. Crumstock, community items of interest. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Obviously, the first one that we do want to mention is uh, a big thank you to everybody who attended the Community Event Foundation fundraiser at Chipotle at 1211 Gulf Road on Monday, July 16th. We hope to have some more and we hope to see more people show up to those kind of fundraisers for community events. The next one that we do want to mention is thank you to all those residents and friends of Rolling Meadows who attended the second scheduled 2018 Friday Rock and Roll in Meadows on Friday, July 6th. Uh, we do appreciate Alderman uh, Diestas, who is Mayor Pro Tem, getting on stage and and doing the intro for us at that point in time. Um, but we do want to mention to everybody that the next Friday Rock is scheduled for September 7th. Um, this event is open and goes between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. at Kimball Hill Park. 
if you missed what the mayor did mention earlier about the Saturday, July 21st Farmers and Food Truck, the market that we do in the downtown, the next one is scheduled for August 25th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Community Church. That's 2720 <coughs> Kirchhoff Road. And uh, obviously we were missing one alderman, but we did have a second Rolling Meadows farm. It was the Cardinal um, Street farm that was actually putting out uh, additional garden um, there were some carrots and some kale and some other items there. So we do hope that everybody does make it to the August 25th event. Um, as we've been putting out throughout uh, the community and the mayor mentioned in the proclamation, we have two events coming up. But um, first and foremost, um, the community bike ride is scheduled for Saturday, August 4th, starting at 6 p.m. from the uh, community center, 3705 Pheasant Drive. This year, there will be a presentation by Wonder Wheels BMX Stunt Team. They will start around 6 o'clock, but the actual ride starts at 7 p.m. For more information, please contact the chief at 847-255-2416. Also on that Saturday, August 4th, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Community Church in Rolling Meadows, um, they will be celebrating their 62nd annual even though it says 61st, 62nd Annual Corn Fest and Craft Fair. And that happens, obviously, on that Saturday. So what I would recommend is you can go to lunch or dinner at Community <coughs> Church, and then you can work it off on the bike ride later on that night. Mm -hmm. And then we actually do have, um, again, going back to some of the signs throughout the community, we have National Night Out um, Tuesday, August 7th from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., and again, that's at the Rolling Meadows Community Center at 3705 Pheasant Drive. Um, for more information, again, please contact Chief Nowacki and his team. Um, we do have some new events, new activities, um, and it does finish with fireworks, like typically. And obviously, the next thing that we do mention and we will keep on mentioning is Friday, August 17th, was the fourth annual Wind Down by the Creek. Um, this event is actually scheduled to happen between you know 7 p.m. and 11 but we say it finishes at 10 because there is a noise ordinance so we do follow that and that is at Kimball Hill Park now what we want to mention is the 11th annual duck race will be held on that same Friday September 7th and this year again just like in the past it's the city's environmental committee rotary um, club of rolling meadows and the Rolling Mouse Park District Foundation that actually um, utilizes any funds that are actually um, spent for this and actually share in some of the work. And I know past aldermen and mayor were back to uh, that I can say this once a meeting, but uh, ducks are $5 per duck, and if you would like to purchase a quack pack, it's five ducks for $20. Um, and again, that is a great event. It does help all the different events that we have. There are tickets here for sale at City Hall and at the Park District, the day of the event. They've been at different events that we've had throughout the community. And again, there are times that you can buy um, the packs or the ducks themselves. Um, we're trying something different this year. Instead of just going down the creek and blowing them and uh, doing little different things, we're going to be using the waterfall. So this should be interesting. At least they'll go a little bit quicker. Um, it might be a shorter duck race, but uh, <laughs> a little bit different from everybody um, waiting for the ducks to get down the creek. Um, the Obviously, the other thing that we do mention every time is that Meadows Cruise Nights are back thanks to Meadows Christian Fellowship located at 2401 Kirchhoff Road. The cruise nights continue from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. and they go all the way until August 31st. Please join in the family fun. It's um, always available at <coughs> for everyone, Kirchhoff Road at um, Meadows Christian Fellowship. Obviously, it's the last meeting of the month. Even though we have five Tuesdays in the month, uh, we don't have a meeting, which is a good thing. But uh, for this August, uh, coming up for committee meetings, the economic development um, will be taking August off like we've done traditionally. It's a lack of items, and also we really want everybody to go to National Night Out on Tuesday, August 7th. However, the Planning and Zoning Commission will be moving their regular meeting 
and because of National Night Out, they will be meeting on Wednesday, August 8th, and that's still at um, August 8th at 7.30 p.m. here at the Council Chambers. They do have a battery of different uh, items that will be up. And right now, tentatively, we have a public meeting for an amendment to the material services plan development to allow a used vehicle dealership, dumpster repair facility, and outdoor storage for the property located at 3650 Burdnick Street, and that's in our M2 district. Colleen Balick from Hillside Auto Body and Services is the petitioner. The second item is preliminary and final approval for the two light sub sublot um, division. Um, for the property located at 1415 Algonquin Road and 1402-1414 Gulf Road, Mark Richardson from Mark Realty um, is actually the petitioner on that. We have a special use for outdoor seating with liquor service and property located at 4015 Algonquin Road. Vince Pafolino at the Stadium Club and Pizza is the petitioner for that. The number four for that event, uh, or that night, I should say, is also a special use for outdoor seating with liquor service for the property located at 3200 Kirchhoff Road. Mike Reppy from Rep's Place is the petitioner for that. Then we also have um, number five, a special use for outdoor seating and property located at 1219 Gulf Road, Musaf Hamad and Musaf Salute from Pita Pita Grill. That's a uh, new business that's working on their permits. So they have not started construction, but they're moving ahead is the petitioner on that. And then the final item that's scheduled for that night for hearing, um, as you drove up to City Hall, you saw signs throughout on our two corners following our rules. Um, there's a sign appeal to allow electronic sign board um, and the property located here at City Hall. It's in the R01 residential um, City Hall and the city is the petitioner. It's a cleanup ordinance. So with that, that's what's really scheduled for the upcoming meetings. Uh, you're on again, Mr. Crumstock. Yes, thank businesses? you very much, uh, Mayor and City Council. We have before you the uh, June new business list. There are five new businesses that came into city. I do want to highlight two of them. Um, the first one is number three on the list, and that was Jersey Mike's. We did a ribbon cutting over there, and if you're on Gulf Road 1450, you will see that new business in the area. The second one that I want to highlight is what I just mentioned before, Rep's Place um, on 3200 Kirchhoff Road. Um, they We did a ribbon cutting over there, too, and as you can see, they're also doing an expansion to the outlet, or not the outlet, but the uh, location right next to them. So they are looking for outside seating. They are doing an expansion. Um, they are moving along on their own ways. But we do appreciate all new five businesses, but we do want to highlight those two restaurants that did open um, in June. OK, Mr. Bolt, uh, traffic staff, traffic advisory report. Thank you, Mayor. There are four items uh, in our report. All of them are new for um, the month of July based on resident and business requests. Uh, just go through them briefly. Uh, first is a request for a stop or yield traffic control at uh, the intersection of Colleen Court with Jody Court. Um, second being a resident request for what was referred to as traffic diversion devices um, on Campbell Street near Cardinal Drive and uh, the Flory Park area. Third being um, request by a resident for additional parking restrictions on Kingfisher Lane, specifically 3700 block. Fourth being a request to uh, reinvestigate the matter that came before us in December regarding on-street parking for large trucks. That matter had been resolved back in January, but has uh, reappeared. All four of these items uh, were discussed by the committee. Um, further investigations are required and uh, they will all reappear for further discussion. and. Uh, at the September meeting, that September meet, or I'm sorry, the August meeting, my apologies, the August meeting uh, is scheduled at this time for Wednesday, August 8th at City Hall at 2.30 p.m. That's our report for July. Uh, well, you get to do double duty. Now we get to talk about Kirchhoff Road, and I can all remember being a new alderman sitting down in your office, I think it was five and a half years ago, and you smiled at me when I said, we're going to get this road done next year. So five and a half years later, tell us how it's going. It is going well. Uh, at this time, um, after some delays, obviously, um, Kirchhoff Road is in the um, IDOT queue for a uh, bid 
letting in November of 2018. Um, this allows the city to use um, up to $1,527,000 in federal highway money because Kirchhoff Road is an eligible route for that money to be used. The city would then match 20% of uh, that amount or given the full amount of the project estimate, $382,000. What we want to point out to the city council at this time is that at your next meeting on August 14th, um, staff will present a resolution um, recommended for approval for a funding agreement. We do these typically for uh, any projects that has grant money tied to them, any projects that uh, go through the state letting process. Um, so that is all very typical and, and straightforward. Um, but we do point out that because this project initiated a couple of years ago with um, some limitations that IDOT put on us that they have since removed, one of them being median work down at uh, the Hicks and Route 53 area, they have now allowed us to incorporate that. Um, second notable item being traffic signal improvements or at least maintenance and replacing of traffic signal loops and uh, electrical equipment. Um, we can utilize the federal money at 80% match for those items. So what you will be seeing is a um, cost estimate that exceeds what the initial federal grant was, but staff and the city engineer believe that we should pursue this to the max in regards to trying to utilize all of the federal monies that have been allowed us and uh, match those at 20%. Um, because of the November, early November bid letting, certainly at the last minute, if need be, we can adjust the budget, um, request either up or hopefully down, um, because we believe that the um, bids in November will be favorable for spring of 2019 construction, but just wanted to make council aware, aware of this early rather than waiting until the August 14th meeting to discuss it. If anyone has questions about this, particularly with this report, or um, has questions when the uh, August 14th um, agreement materials come out, uh, I'd encourage you to contact uh, either myself at Public Works or uh, Barry Crumpstock, the city manager. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Are there matters not on the agenda this evening? Mr. Cannon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a couple of things, so I'll try to be quick. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just uh, say thank you to Mr. Bud Matz for the great work he did for the city by saving us almost $10,000 on the lift through his knowledge and his diligence. I think it's important that we recognize that he did a great job for the city and we saved all of us some money. I think that's really a great thing. Um, also, I was wondering if uh, we could get a report on what's going on with Brookwood condominiums. We haven't heard anything with that situation in months. I have no idea where it's at. I just would like an update on that if we could. We don't need it tonight, but whenever we can get one soon. We could just we could just have a letter or staff staff report on a Friday. That's, Give you an update. That's okay. fine, whatever. You just so we get an update. I have no idea what's going on. Um, also, I'd like to find out what, what's going on with Station 15 or 16. Excuse me, Station 17 property that's sitting vacant. What are we doing to move that property? I'd okay. Like a report on that also. Mr. Grump comes to you staff report. Just we'll get staff reports. Thank you. Okay. And then last, uh, this will probably be good news to a lot of people. I'll be out of town for the next meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cannon. Any, any other matters not on the agenda? Is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Gallup has made that. Is there a second? All in favor, aye. Yes. Aye. Opposed, yes. nay. We are adjourned. <laughs>